clock has struck 3 a.m. The witching hour has begun. Are you ready to be initiated into the Black Magic Heaven? Join your sisters, Andrea, Kaylee, Liz, and Marissa, as we meet to discuss the macabre, creepy, and sinister. We call upon the Four Corners to summon a djinn to take us to Panic Fest. Um, so in looking at the lineup for this year's Panic Fest, we were inspired by a movie screening called The Gin, uh, written and directed by David Charbonnier and Justin Powell about a mute boy that's trapped in his apartment with a sinister monster um, when he makes a wish to fulfill his heart's greatest desire. So we're sure that goes really well, right, ladies? Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't seen the movie yet, right? None of us have seen it I yet? I have not. No. I'm very excited to see it, but yes. We, yes. I don't think, yeah. Yep. So um, going into this, did you guys know much about Jen or Jeannie lore or like anything? Pretty much all I knew is from pop culture. I mean, I yeah. I will say that I feel like as someone that has consumed a lot of media that has a monster of the week vibe to it, like, you know, I've watched a lot of Supernatural, Buffy, Charmed, which we're going to talk about all three of those shows later. <laughs> um, I think that this is something that a lot of shows like that have done delved into at some point so um whether it's kind of more on the silly side or if it is on the scarier side um i think that i've definitely heard of the concept of jin and then the sillier concept of genie um mm -hmm. so obviously jin being i think a lot scarier uh than the genie that we might know from like cartoon type things you know a fun genie but yeah, I, I don't know a lot other than just, yeah, the pop culture references. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of with you, Liz, but I also realized I knew more about it than I expected based on mm -hmm. the pop culture references I had seen in the past. Same. Yeah. And it always, it kind of reminded me too of uh, the concept of like the monkey's paw, that story, you know, when you make a wish and something comes back times three or whatever and how that's been explored in various ways, like, whether it be through the Twilight Zone or even Are You Afraid of the Dark? And mm -hmm. maybe think of, well, we'll get into it later, but like movies like Wishmaster and stuff like that. So um, not so familiar with the religious contexts either, but um, yeah, the pop culture references a little bit so, more so. According to the Quran, jinn were created um, right after angels. So angels were made on Wednesday, and then God created Jinn on Thursday and humans a thousand years later on Friday. Um, Fuck yeah. <laughs> so they're <laughs> very like similar because they're not deities. I think that's kind of a misconception. Sometimes people think that there are some kind of godlike creatures when they are more human. Um, but uh, there's different spellings of the word um, and it's been anglicized, you know, to be genie. It's kind of an interchangeable term, um, but they are neither evil or um, benevolent, they, they cross both lines. Mm -hmm. So it's not like all of them are bad, um, just like humans, the free will thing. Um, and in the Quran, they also talk about how they were created to worship Allah the same way humans were. But they do think that they are above humans because they were created first um, out of smoke and ash and um, were made out of clay and dirt, which is not as romantic, I guess. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, they're not strictly Islamic either. There's several pagan beliefs um, that do also believe in jinn. Um, and it can also be used as a collective designation for like different types of supernatural creatures. Um, so sometimes researching it can be a little bit confusing when you run into, they're like referring to devils and demons and jinn all in one collective group. Um, but the jinn we're talking about today are, um, you know, can do multiple things. They can turn into animals, so like dogs, snakes. Um, some of them can fly and some of them take human form. And they say they prey on humans with like a weak temperament. So if somebody's depressed or has some sort of mental illness, the jinn could be causing that. Um, so it's, I think it's really similar to like, especially I think about like um, Salem witch trial days mm -hmm. when like somebody had like schizophrenia and they're like, oh, she's a witch. Yeah. So it's like yeah. kind of the same thing with the gin. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that I thought was the most interesting is the different forms that they could take. So you kind of you brought that up. And I think uh, I had no idea, like, because I always think of Genie and I think of Aladdin, like immediately, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. That's like the first thing I think of. And so I always think of them as kind of like these almost like human ghost type yeah. hybrid things. Um, and it's funny because when I was looking at the different forms, there was the zoo, zoological, it was like, is that the right word? Am mm-hmm. I saying the right so, word? Yeah. yeah. And so they could be kind of human-esque animal type hybrids, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. But then they also had the fact that they could be represented represented by a shadow or a storm. And right. I think that to me feels more like that sounds like Genie because when you see Genie come out of the bottle and everything, it's always like, like a tornado. <laughs> And so I could tell that some of that lore has been inspired by that part of it. Like, right, so yeah. it makes a lot of sense to me that there's a lot of storm and rushing air and that kind of look I feel like is used a lot with genies, like when they appear. Um, and so I appreciated that that part, you know, connected to the original lore and then has been brought into the pop culture stuff. And so that was something that I found really interesting. Mm-hmm. We're talking about that part, so. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I think there was a little bit I read too that like um, with that they could cause like dust storms and different Mm -hmm. things Mm -hmm. just to make our lives harder. (laughs) Um, Just like for no particular reason, just for fun. Like that's nice. (laughs) Yes, you know. I just think it's so interesting how similar they are to humans because I didn't really know that. I thought that they were more spiritual beings. Like I didn't realize technically they have to eat. They have to you know, sleep, they're not immortal, they can be killed. However, they can also live for thousands of years. So there's a really interesting element to the different combinations between like their human resemblances and also their angelic or demonic resemblances. And they're very much in between these two planes as Mm -hmm. like a creature or supernatural being. So um, I found that really interesting. And then after looking into more research about, you know, the folklore with them, I'm really excited that this film is premiering at this festival because I feel like it's such an under, um, like it's just not explored to its full potential. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. In the yeah, ways same. that it could have been. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's exciting to kind of see this back on the radar, especially within a uh, genre film because, um, I do wish that it was darker. I mean, you know, those fairy tales, uh, especially from, you know, Disney films come from uh, darker folklore legends and tales, but uh, it would have been cool to like grown up with a darker form of the genie or djinn. I feel like I was very much, um, it was very sugar coated until I was an adult and started watching, you know, 80s horror films, exploring like, different horror films I guess and realizing something uh, like where they kind of came from and then doing research for this episode so yeah I definitely think the darkest part of the lore that could be connected to childhood type stuff would be the just be careful what you wish for concept Mm -hmm. definitely because I do think that definitely was used in child horror or like children's like Mm -hmm. spooky stuff Uh, but I don't think necessarily it was represented represented by a like a form or a being coming and then being that wish giver. It was more mm-hmm. like, oh, I wish for this and then something happened. I mean, like even something as stupid as like Freaky Friday, it was like, I wish right. I could yeah. get it. And mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, well, you get your wish. You got it. it. Yeah. A lot of baggage, you know? So um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's cool that you can see how you can almost track the timeline of like, oh, it starts out as this, this gin concept. Then like someone twists it into genie. Then yeah. that genie concept becomes be careful what you wish for. And then the, like, it's, I think that's kind of what's cool about this is that there's almost like a timeline of like how now we, where, here's where we're at now with this concept. But we really haven't done a lot with the gin concept, which is why right. I think that's exactly what you're saying, Marissa, which is I think really cool that mm-hmm. we're getting to see more um, film with that particular part of it yeah mm-hmm. just the lore itself it feels like you can do so much mm-hmm. you can focus on one thing whereas it feels like everything else in the past has focused on certain elements of the lore 
-hmm. but the entirety of the Jin lore is very cool and complex and there's so much to it. Yeah. Well, and also just like cultural and religious representation through a more dynamic lens, mm -hmm. you know, especially within um, horror films. So I am really excited to see that movie and um, how they explore it because I feel like the other versions of this is just so whitewashed, mm -hmm. even Absolutely. though it doesn't try to be. Um, yeah. I, it will be interesting and um i do like the religious aspects uh behind all of this even though like i'm not familiar with the quran or i'm not very religious myself um i do find it interesting and i think even like there was a part of the quran that was written to be interpreted and read both by humans and by jinn there's like a specific chapter and i thought that was really cool too like i had never heard of something like that before yeah, and so there was like a whole thing about them like being like humans where they will be judged as well, like to go to heaven or hell um, based on their actions. And um, that was one of the like more interesting stories that I read. Um, it was, there's two versions that I found and one of them, um, Iblis is a uh, angel and in the other one, he is a djinn, um, but there's, a lot of chaos going on on earth because of the jinn there's just lots of violence and um bad things happening and so he goes to allah and is like you know hey give me a army of angels we're gonna go down and we're gonna take care of this so they basically go to earth to like destroy all the jinn um and so apparently this is why there aren't a lot of jinn left like on earth is because they killed most of them um but shortly after that god created adam and he asked all of the angels to bow to Adam. And Iblis is like, I'm not doing that because this is like a dirt creature and I'm above him. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, he was yeah, yeah, like, I haven't heard of Adam being <laughs> called a dirt creature. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like Eve gets all the shit. So like, yeah. I'm fine with calling Adam a dirt yeah. creature too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the new dirt thing. Dirt creature Adam. <laughs> um, so he's getting banished. And it, when he's like walking out, he's grabbing his stuff. He's like, hey, you know, I could still be useful to you. Like, I'm going to show you that these humans can't be trusted and don't really worship you so he's left as like a tempter for humanity with hopes that he can redeem himself on judgment day and ascend back to heaven so i like i thought that story was very cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's a, a little a couple of those um i think the other biblical reference that i really like um, being a fan of ancient aliens and like trying to find explanations for like why humans mm -hmm. couldn't do smart things back in the day <laughs> without um, technology. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, in the Quran, but not the Bible, King Solomon, um, when he built the first temple, that he had control of jinn and he used them like in his military and to build the temples and he could command them and see them and talk to them. Um, what I thought was kind of fun was that is in the Quran. But what's in the Bible and not the Quran is how King Solomon had um, 700 wives and 300 concubines, but he was okay. a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <What>? wait. <laughs> he, so I'm like, the jinn are helping his love life too, right? Because he didn't- No just... way they're not, right? That sounds exhausting. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. 700 like, wives? You well, can't even see life. each, you can't even spend a single day with each no. other. No. No. Like, you in an entire year, yeah. Yeah, and no. I they describe them all as foreign princesses. <laughs> it's like so an extreme like your average like handmaiden. <laughs> these are like high class. Like... It's like an extreme version of The Bachelor, except they all win. <laughs> except not yeah. win. <laughs> they just, they all, <laughs> just like everybody on The Bachelor always. Oh, oh that sounds so here, fucking annoying. It could be okay because maybe he's like, you know what? I'll make sure you have what you need, but like they only have to see him once a year or every two years, you know? So it's just yeah, like, that's oh, true. I'm I mean, doing my own thing. Technically, yeah. I'm your wife, but God, that's I'll hilarious. I just had to like stop at that because if that's yeah. like what you know, like that's what we strive to do. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, God, seven hundred. That's too many. That's too oh. many. That's too many. That's where I draw the line at six hundred. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like that's well, doable as long know. as there's boundaries. Yeah. Can juggle that. <laughs> <laughs> 600 I can handle. Seven? No. Seven, no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, so the, in the Quran, there is, like Jenner mentioned multiple times, and a lot of times people will compare the Iblis character to Satan, 
Um, but there is actually a different person in the Quran, and I hope I don't butcher this, but sh I think it's Shaitan, um, is actually like the Satan. But Iblis really, as the tempter and like, you know, fallen angel that gets banished, like lines up with the Christian uh, devil more so, but um, it's actually in the Quran 29 times. Um, so it's a pretty prevalent thing. Wow. And I spent way too much time watching gin sightings on YouTube. <laughs> I love it. I watched that whole video. They're I love so, it. Like, some I of missed them are, it. They're like legit yeah. creepy. Like there's the a one few... where the guy, they're like, is this a homeless man or is yeah. he possessed by a gin? And they, you, it like very, and of course it could be like, you know. But he's like up. a contortionist, like in that one, picture where he's like by the doorway is like I don't know he's like creeped over and you just yeah. see his head peeking around a corner and you're like yeah. they're like is this a homeless man or is it a it's very and then he just man. disappears like they turn the corner with the camera there there was it's a gone. few things that like I was like I don't know that could be CG but it's kind of like suspect so I'm not sure how I feel about Jin real or fake I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll be my skeptical self as always, and just yeah, like, eh, it's probably not real. <laughs> well, and that's the thing with but... like, the, the <laughs> sightings they had, where uh, most of them were just like, "Do you see that shadow drift across the screen?" Yeah. And it's like, that's it's like ghost true. adventures. Yeah, exactly. it's the same or way I feel like about that all that stuff. Yeah, I want to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm gonna stick with my Scully self over here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You guys, you can be Mulder. It's fine. Well, and where there, were there's these even sightings? videos on how to control the gin and like diff, like how to like some like find good ones to work with. And there's like tutorials on YouTube. See, I didn't watch that one. So but... You can find your own gin. So how do you control them? Like, what are what's the tutorials look like? I don't know. I didn't finish the video. <laughs> step by step. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Wait, someone Google it. Google it right now. That sounds like <laughs> some uh, like clickbaity videos. If I ever did hear about it, like that well, that YouTuber J Station or whatever, he got officially like canceled or whatever. But yeah, he always had videos where he's like, "Oh, we're gonna call Mickey Mouse's ghost at 3 a.m." Like, <laughs> like, he'd be like on his cell phone FaceTiming, and there's like a really creepy Mickey Mouse or did something. You, and it's Mickey like, Mouse Look, that's Mickey Mouse. Uh, yeah, it, Mickey I'm not Mouse's even ghost? That was one of the, Yeah, it was. He would be like, oh, we're gonna call. I remember he did one of like a dead celebrity like a couple days after they died and people oh, were like, that's uh, just tacky. no, yeah, thank you. But yeah, that sounds exactly like something he would do. I mean- Like Mickey Mouse, <laughs> fine. We yeah. all know that's a fictional character, but also yeah. Yeah. is he saying Mickey Mouse is real? Like what? Yeah, that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. That's a whole nother episode we can yeah. talk about. Mi Mickey Mouse isn't real. <laughs> 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 we won't get into that right now. We'll that we'll save that for a later. Yeah. Oh, what if yeah. Mickey Mouse were a cannibal though? <laughs> wow, how quickly you <laughs> dealt <laughs> in the cannibals. That's just and for the back. first time, I'm not the one that brought it up. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for real, that's true. Shocking. <laughs> Fun oh. images in my okay, but now. can we go back to the 700 wives for one second? <laughs> yes, let's go. Um, because it, I was re like following along on this our notes, and it's 700 wives and 300 concubines, right? Right. So concubines aren't wives; they're just no. they're mistresses. Yeah. So that's a thousand women. Yeah. Whatever. That's <laughs> I'm guessing this was a power move because they mentioned Whatever. that the wives were princesses. So, like, if he marries, like, a princess, I'm sure he gets some sort of land claim in that area. And then they just come uh, live on the grounds of sure. the, you know, palace. And, like, they don't ever even meet each so other. So they were an probably. investment. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. It's a way to diversify your portfolio. Mm -hmm. I love how men think that there's, like, an energy for this. Like, they could handle that. <laughs> like, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> One thousand women. Is that what men want? <laughs> I hope not. I oh, sounds tired. Waiting for like the honey do list from a thousand women. Like <laughs> <laughs> this needs painted yeah. and that fence needs mended and <laughs> Yeah. I don't have enough goats, I don't know. <laughs> like goats. back then I'm like, what did they do all they yeah. What did they definitely do involved all day? goats? They Had summoned to, gin. Sure. That's what they did. Yeah. All day. <laughs> Just like someone to hang out with. 
<laughs> Listen, yeah, I don't need any wishes. I just need a friend. I just okay. really want a friend. <laughs> Aww, really need sad. someone to hang out with. <laughs> so that is a gin wish gone wrong. Like, I want a friend. You have a thousand ladies now. This isn't what I want. Yeah. This is your punishment. <laughs> yeah. Or like, he wished for like the perfect wife. Mm. Takes so he seven. got a thousand women. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds stressful. Yeah, no thanks. 1,000 of anything sounds stressful, aside yes. from dollars. Yes. <laughs> I would it's definitely true. take 1,000 dollars. Dollars, I'll take it. Anything else, I don't know. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> God. Um, so I think with all, like, the background on that, um, like, everybody said, like, the most gin knowledge we have is based in pop culture. Um, and I think we have 1,001 nights to thank for that. So originally it was a collection of Middle Eastern folk tales that was uh, made in Arabic. Well then, um, I think just like everything else, there has to be like a mayonized version of it. Um, so Antoine Galland, who is a French writer, took the Arabic text and translated it, but he also added Aladdin's Lamp and Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves that were not in the original book, um, but they were stories he heard from a Syrian storyteller Johanna Diab um, when he was in Paris. So I thought that was kind of interesting because the those are probably two of the most famous stories mm. um, from it and they weren't even in the original one. Um, but that's kind of like, I think where we got like the, um, you know, the genie coming out of the lamp yes. story in that. So do you guys have like favorites of the genie? Well, so some of the ones that I put in were specifically of TV because that was as far as getting into spooky stuff in general i would say my inch my main entrance was through television because For sure, yeah. uh in high school i was addicted to tv and i was addicted to buying box sets of tv and i spent guys i'm so disappointed in my high school self because i spent so much money on dvd <laughs> box sets and they're worth like nothing now nothing like <laughs> you it's cannot... like investing in beanie babies but... yeah i mean it's <laughs> just so depressing because i remember I took a bunch of them to like half price books or whatever, not like, uh, you know, this has been years ago. And I remember just being like, this is probably like $5,000 worth of DVDs. And I probably got $20. I mean, you know, it's just a depressing thing anyways. But taking anything to half price books to sell is like that though. Oh yeah. But I, you know, I don't <laughs> yeah. have time to be getting on eBay all day and like, yeah, mm -hmm. I have to box it up myself and yeah. sell it. Oh. Uh, but so the first one that I thought of when I was thinking of pop culture references, other than of course, like Aladdin, and then I also of course think of I Dream of Genie because I, I was, was just a huge Nick at too. Night. I was a huge Nick at Night junkie, so you know. But um, I remembered specifically there being even I think they say the word gin. I could be wrong, but I remember Charmed having a huge like. I mean that was a big episode on Charmed, mm -hmm. um, and so they had a couple of episodes. Uh, the first one being "Be careful what you witch for," mm -hmm. uh, uh, really yeah, ties back funny. to yeah. <laughs> um, and so that was one where a genie wishes unintentionally caused disaster for the sisters, despite his effort to help them. So he was trying to be helpful, but kept doing stuff really stupidly. And uh, sounds terrible. Yeah, so he wasn't necessarily bad. <laughs> like he wasn't he a bad character. He's yeah. like fumbly and everything. Yeah, he was. yeah. He's he just was like just a, drawn that I remember way. that. Yeah. <laughs> and like drop there, dead Fred or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and then uh, there was another one where Phoebe. It's called I Dream of Phoebe, which you know I Dream of Jeannie. Um, oh my god, episode titles for TV shows are so corny. <laughs> I kind of love it though. I know, it's it's wonderful. Um, <laughs> but she uh, is faced with a demon who had been trapped in a bottle and turned into a genie as punishment. And then when she tries to like help it, because she thinks it, it kind of tricks her into helping it, I remember. And then she actually becomes trapped in the bottle and like has to take the genie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember that one a lot. And I think both kind of play with that thing where the genie gen characters are not really like good or evil mm -hmm. um they just kind of are what's the best thing for me i feel like that's the thing with a lot of these pop culture things is that they're always in it for what's in it for them you know right. i mean they're mm -hmm. not trying to just be let me give you wishes you know it's like 
I'll give oh, you wishes if yeah. you do this. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, even Genie from Aladdin does that. I mean, he yeah. even is like trying to, you know, get out of his bottle and stuff. So, um, then the supernatural episode, um, what is and what should never be, uh, actually featured Dean hunting a Jin. They call it a Jin in the show for sure. Um, and it doesn't grant wishes at all. It actually causes the victim to enter a dream in which their greatest greatest wish was granted. So like it would create this like dream scenario where they were getting their wishes fulfilled, but then while they were asleep, the jinn would actually feast and on and drain their blood. Okay. So uh, it's a very scary version of it. I mean, definitely scarier version of the jinn character. Um, and I would say just straight up evil. I mean, I don't think that that's towing yeah. a line on like, is it good or evil? It's like, eh, you're pretty evil. <laughs> um, Vampire Jen is scarier than regular Yeah, gin. I was yeah. like, yeah. That's, that's way <laughs> dang. Different. I've never heard of them drinking blood, but right on. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they got to eat and drink just like we do. So I guess they choose what they eat and drink. I mean, Marissa, blood for blood, you know? (laughs) (laughs) I know. Blood for blood. We'll come back around to life. (laughs) The (laughs) Toby Yes, I'm excited to hear about that movie. This is Um, my home now. (laughs) And then probably my favorite and also probably the least connected to Jin is from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is the vengeance demon concept, which is Anya, the character of Anya. For anybody that knows, I'm sure there's people watching this that know Buffy. Mm -hmm. Um, And she, when she first comes on the show, she's not like a, she becomes a recurring character later and she becomes human. Spoiler alert. Um, But uh, when she first comes on the show, she is a vengeance demon. And so basically she grants wishes to people that have been scorned or like they uh usually it's women that have had an issue with a man and then she comes in the picture and she's like what can i do for you to make this better so it's right when cordelia breaks up with uh xander because xander has cheated on her which like Mm -hmm. he's an idiot cordelia is perfect and uh you know (laughs) we won't even get into it right now but uh (laughs) but she comes in and basically is like how can i fix this and then of course when she fixes it Cordelia wishes that Buffy never showed up because then her life wouldn't be what it is. And so then when that happens, the whole world has changed because Buffy never showed up and demons are just ruling the earth basically mm-hmm. because she isn't there to stop them. So it's kind of one of those, be careful with you what you wish for scenarios because basically, yeah, she got what she wanted, but it made everything a billion times worse. So um, those are the three that like I immediately knew and I was like oh I, I watched those episodes I you know I remember these I this is what I think of when I think of Jin and this concept of a genie and all that stuff there's also an X-Files episode that goes into it it's in season 7 so I don't even think I've seen it because I X-Files kind of gets a little a little messy towards the a end messy. <laughs> but uh yeah so I don't, I don't know if any of you have seen it but I I was not super familiar with it, but um, I, that's weird. I, I watched was... oh, go ahead. X Files recently, like before the last season came out. I binged the whole thing in like mm-hmm. a three month time span, and I don't remember that. But it all kind of gets muddled together yeah. when you're watching that much at once. So yeah, yeah. Basically, a guy awakens a genie, and like he he grants him three wishes, but there's always like loopholes with the wishes, and mm-hmm. so then it becomes like disastrous for the person. I mean, classic genie concept. Um, then of course we have Aladdin, which is our OG genie that I feel like all of us were first introduced to. Yeah, I feel like my introductions with genies or like my experiences with genies for the most part have always been positive or like you said, Liz, like yes. they fumble. It's not always, it's not had this horror element to it. Mm-hmm. It's always been genie from Aladdin. I dream of genie where sometimes things go awry, but it's not necessarily they're malicious. Fault. Yeah, yeah, it's just that's what they are. And of yeah. course, Marissa, you mentioned this before we uh, started our podcast. Christina Aguilera's "Genie in a Bottle." <laughs> Why did we not like think of that sooner? <laughs> Earlier, I don't know how. I think I was just thinking about like how genies had sort of become sexualized in a lot of different mm-hmm. ways, like with "I Dream of Genie," and then um, I mean, I can't hate on Christina Aguilera's "Genie in a Bottle," like. 
that song was hot back in like 2000 or whenever that was and I was like 12 or 13 but I'm sorry when it <laughs> comes on in the grocery store I'm still like dancing Either, oh it comes God, on in the grocery store, store. Yeah. that's amazing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh my god I yeah, love like, that it's a fan of tuna yeah it is yes. <laughs> Yes, you should watch the music video because it's so just, she's like 17. It's I so know. fucking weird. It's cringy. Yeah. It's so cringy. early 2000s. Early 2000s. Yes. Early she's like 90s. rolling around in the sand and there's lots of fire. And you know, maybe that's like a reference to like humans I being bet from it play is. and Jen being from fire. Fire, I was like yep. way too into it. And I was like, this is just so weird. <laughs> like you suddenly see it through a whole new perspective. <laughs> like, yes. oh. Humans, dirt, gin, fire. <laughs> yeah. It all makes sense now. <laughs> wow, because from me, the right like way. 17 year old me is like, yeah. Like, who directed that music video? They are clearly the one. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's like hyper sexual and well, seeing yes. all these like little kids. Uh, anyways, but yeah, like I was thinking about the sexualization <laughs> of genies and how, and like especially for women, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, I grew up with Aladdin for sure. And then like, I think the return. Turn of Jafar, the sequel, yeah. had an evil genie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with like the ponytail or something. Yeah. Was Jafar yeah. as the genie, or was it? Yeah, genie? I think Jafar. Yeah. Genie, yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. okay. he got sucked into the lamp at the end, yep. right? Yeah, I think so, that's yeah, right. Because yeah. he had to take the place of genie, I think, which okay. I, I think that's a common thread in pop culture as well, is like the whole thing where the genie tricks trick you, you and yeah. then you somehow get into the lamp and have to take the place of the genie. Which is kind of an interesting that, thing because it's like, uh, you know, the Jin being a clearly separate being from a human. It's kind of a weird thing to like get tricked into become taking their place. But um, that sounds I, so familiar, and it's even used like in. It makes me think of the movie Us or Oh yeah, you know, mm -hmm. um, the one I love. You know, I feel like yeah, that's yeah. such a common like sci-fi right. trope yeah. in a way. Like switching, yeah, switching places with someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am kind of sad though, um, because up to this, I never really knew like the real Aladdin story. Um, and I like, I maybe it's been made and I just didn't look it up. But um, so it's, it's a little bit different, but there's two genies. And there's That's one sweet. like, um, so this guy comes and he's like, hey, Aladdin, I'm your uncle. And I need you to go to this cave and like find this lamp. And it's like a super dangerous task. And so he sends him to go do it, but he's really like an evil sorcerer. Like he's not really his uncle. Um, so Aladdin goes and like, he has a ring that he gave him and there's a genie in that. And then he okay. brings the lamp home and his mom's cleaning it. And then the other genie pops out, um, but he ends up killing the sorcerer at the end. So it's like a much darker tale, but mm -hmm. um, it's kind of cool. There's no magic carpet and there's no Abu. Mm. Oh, Abu. Oh. Abu is cute. I did yeah. think about him. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea, well, you I said guarantee Aladdin is not as hot. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, he's Chinese, actually, in the real story. Oh, and okay. and the sorcerer is from Africa. So the whole thing has like, been changed. Yeah, very mm -hmm. different. Well, you said Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. And now all I can think of is that Beastie Boys song, you know, rhyming and stealing. <laughs> the chorus is Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves. Okay. <laughs> That's all I had to add to that conversation. <laughs> you you want to sing some more of that? No, I don't okay. actually. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> well, so I had obviously a lot of the knowledge on the TV parts of it, but I know you ladies have watched a lot more of the movies. So mm -hmm. what can you tell us about some of the films that have been impacted by Jen? I will say it is crazy to look at the list of things that are inspired by the Jin concept mm -hmm. online because it is almost never ending feeling. Like there's mm -hmm. video games we're not even gonna get into. Like there's tons of music other than just Genie in a Bottle. Um, and what? I mean like- <laughs> Not the only one. <laughs> so many kids shows, like I, Danny Phantom was on there, which I mean, shout out to Danny Phantom. Yeah, that's a good show. show. I love that show, but like, you know, there's a ton of things on there, but I know you ladies had some specific films that uh, obviously delve a lot into this. So tell me about them. Well, one of my favorites is um, Wishmaster from 1997. And this is such a fun, enjoyable movie to revisit. And mm -hmm. so it's, 
produced by Wes Craven, directed by Robert Kurtzman. And fun fact about Robert Kurtzman is that he actually did the special effects for Night of the Creeps. Oh, I love that movie. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I know, it's so good. Such a good and movie. he also was on the um, effects crew for Tremors and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. So yeah. it's oh, yeah, cool that was to have movie. like a dude who's directing the film that also has an eye for special and practical effects mm -hmm. because you can totally see it. Oh yeah. When you sure. watch this film, the special effects are so fantastic and so great and gnarly as hell. And uh, so well executed. It's, they're so well executed, yeah. especially mm -hmm. for 1997, where yeah. a lot of films were exploring CG in genre. Like this wasn't the 80s and primetime effects. Mm -hmm. So um, it's one of those really nitty gritty uh, horror films and it's great. So uh, it's also scored by Harry Manfredini, who scored the Friday or Friday the 13th, the films in that franchise, House, Slaughter High. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of um, horror talent behind this film. So essentially the movie is about a gin that is summoned from a stone that mm -hmm. is found in this ancient statue. And uh, Robert England, in fact, who played Freddy Krueger, is this antique dealer. So you get to see him without the makeup and he's you yeah. know, buying all this high-end I love the opening scene. Art. <laughs> I hadn't watched it for a really long time and I tried to, I didn't get to watch the whole thing today, but I watched bits and pieces as I was like reading about gin. And the opening scene where they're like, you know, they see the construction crew or whatever on the boat unloading the mm -hmm. statue. And there's some construction dude with a cigar and he's pouring whiskey or whatever into a yeah. coffee cup. And the next thing you know, this giant stone just like crushes <laughs> and, and Robert England's just like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Well, and then he pockets the gem, mm -hmm. the gemstone yep. that's like this really big kind of ruby gemstone. But the gin is actually trapped inside of it. And yeah. so. Um, the main character goes to uh, look into it. Her and her friend are gemologists, I think. And um, essentially this djinn is let out as they're studying it. And uh, he comes to, oh my God. So like when, okay, the djinn takes on different forms. I'm not doing a good job at explaining this film, like plot wise, but like it, you just have to watch it, just watch it. But the yeah, it takes on different forms throughout the film. And like the first form it is when it comes out of the uh, of the gemstone, it kind of reminds me of the tequila worm from Poltergeist 2. Yes. Or was yeah. it 2? Yes. Yeah. yeah Ugh, absolutely. It's so gross. And his, he, he like, you know, wiggles up to the guy. He's like, are yeah. you in pain? Like, <laughs> I can endure I pain. can help you. I can help you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, help me. And he just ends up like fucking brutally killing him. I know. So <laughs> it's very like, what are you saying, Kaylee? The opening sequence of that movie, it takes place in like, I think 1127 AD in Persia. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you see them in this like temple or whatever. And clearly things have gotten out of control. So they're trying to, he, the whole thing is to trap him in the stone. And there's like a dude who is screaming, help me. And you just see his skeleton slowly like, <laughs> rip out of his it's body. It's so good. And then jump on the back of another helpless person <laughs> and is attacking him. And there's like a weird alien-esque, like almost xenomorph looking, like chest burster looking thing coming out of some dude's stomach, gnawing on a woman's arm. Like so much <laughs> It's First so great. Two minutes it's of that so movie. Because you don't really know. You just see him forging the gem, and then you know things have gotten out of control. And no mm -hmm. more Wishmaster. And then you see it all take this terrible turn. And the next thing you know, Robert England's on a dock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a coffee just, a coffee spill just ruins yeah, everything. Ruins everything. So they, so like the gin gets out, and then as he encounters various people he it's kind of like a hellraiser vibe where like as he encounters more people and becomes more powerful he becomes more human and takes on more of a human form mm -hmm. and um so this girl this gemologist is trying to essentially stop him and trap him but he has like if you grant if he grants you three wishes and he goes about this in a way that tricks you and is you know manipulative of course mm -hmm. so um <clears throat> he's tricking all these people gaining more and more power and if he does this to you three times or if he gets three wishes, then the 
the like whole gen universe will be unleashed onto humanity and take over the world essentially. Mm -hmm. So um, fantastic. Watch so it. Fun. It's so great. It's <laughs> so fun. Um, Ted Ramey is in it. Tony yep. Todd from Candyman is in it. Kane Hodder is in it. He makes a cameo. Mm -hmm. So there's all these really cool, um, you know, guys who are from other horror franchises in there. And I mean, I think it does the gen a really good justice in the fact that it is really creepy. It's a fun 90s film, mm -hmm. great special effects. And uh, yeah, it's just like an enjoyable, entertaining movie. Yeah. No, I haven't seen the second, third, or fourth I haven't one. Either. No, I want either. to, but I hear they just get like increasingly worse and yeah. worse and more and more sexual. Oh, that seems right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but I don't think he, I don't think he goes to space. Seven hundred wives. Oh God, I mean, it could still happen. I would watch that movie. <laughs> it could still happen. I, mean, but... I was just rewatching it today, just kind of paying attention on and off. I just kept picking up on certain things. Where at the end, towards the end, I think there's like fifteen minutes left. They're at that big fundraiser. I think it is. Mm -hmm. and he finally gets in and he just starts like making all these wishes come true. And there's a scene where this woman goes, I wish you could see right through me or something. And she turns into glass. At first I thought it was ice, but it's, I think it's actually glass. Cause then you see her, tur her whole body turn into glass and shards of glass explode throughout the party. And some dude's face gets like oh my cut God, off. It's so it's fun. With, like, I love it. Taking out their face. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's There's a lot of great gags in it. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. many good gags in it. Because it's, it's just fantastic. It, it focuses <laughs> on the way he clearly is smart enough to pick up on. You know, he was like, "Oh, I wish I could go to bed early or whatever," mm -hmm. and just the things that we as humans say that we don't really mm -hmm. think about the intentions yeah. behind it or what it could actually mean. Mm -hmm. And him as his gin, he takes that context and is just flips it. Because I think before he goes into the party, he's talking and a security guard mm -hmm. he's like don't you wish you could escape and he's like well yeah because he's basically trying to convince this guy oh you i could help you get a better job mm -hmm. and then he says don't you wish you could escape and the guy says yes and the next shot is him in a like dunk tank basically in a straight jacket trying to get out and he just says harry houdini got out in two minutes or whatever and walks <laughs> away and <laughs> just, he clearly takes you you don't think about it like oh man i wish i had some cookies or whatever and yeah it's like that's finds, not what i meant yeah he <laughs> finds a way to take the most basic wish even though yeah. you know and then twists it into this insanely mm -hmm. terrible thing yeah I haven't seen the sequels either, but I don't think Andrew Divoff gets enough credit for that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, because when people talk about like the horror villains, like, and I think mm -hmm. like he was just phenomenal. He's great. Mm -hmm. and he has it, that it, really. The, it reminded me a little voice. bit of like Freddy Krueger because the comedy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's so great. And um, I met him at Crypticon a couple years ago, and he's just a super nice human being too. Aww. So that's always a Love bonus. Love to hear it. Love yeah. To hear that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's one that is just... If there is a menacing story about the gin, that one does it really well, even though it's very... It's almost kind of campy mm -hmm. because there are some really funny moments in there. And then the score, too, doesn't take itself too seriously. Like, even in the beginning, when there's all this chaos and gnarly body horror going on, yeah. the score is still very upbeat yeah, and it's fun. Light, it's almost yeah. like Jerry Goldsmith style, like um gremlins -y, you know like yeah. playful yeah so uh it just has so many great elements in it but i think that's a really good depiction and on the flip side of that which is not a good depiction of the gin is man i hate saying this because I, I, I know i <laughs> know and he's a fellow texan so i'm like yep. but Toby Hooper's 2011 film gin is not great it has nope. 9% on Rotten Tomatoes for <laughs> multiple reasons. And, oh man. Um, Is it at least so, good, bad, or it's just bad, we'll bad? No, it's no. just like bad, bad. It's not good, bad. We'll I mean, will you the watch and just give you a rundown of it. I watched it like <laughs> six hours ago for the first time and it's... It's not great, but I did. Bad. So when I was watching it, I was like, where the fuck did he come up with this concept? You know, like, cause mm -hmm. the information I was reading mostly about the gen had nothing to do with what this film was about with but the then baby. I yeah the baby yeah so like there's this uh, okay so apparently um so genies or gen could take on human form in some like 
I guess, tales or, you know, versions, and they could reproduce mm -hmm. with humans. So there could be these half gin, half human babies, okay. right? And so baby gin were known as seers, and they can communicate with the divine or other gin and um, like relatives in the divine. So <clears throat> they were like religious just uh, consultants and they could end curses, they could find lost animals, they could settle um, personal disputes. Even though there's a baby gen concept and there was like this, they basically used this concept for baby gen, half baby, half human, and how gin could take on human forms and mm -hmm. sexu sexualize them and be, you know, <laughs> You said half women. baby, half human and I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> But like, isn't that right though? Sometimes, you know. Okay, uh, half baby. Oh, yeah. half sorry half for the human. parents. I'm out sorry. There. I know. I'm <laughs> dying. Okay. That's when I, I call meant. like a baby it, and I feel so yeah. bad. You know. I do it okay. all the time. <laughs> well, they do refer to the baby in the movie as it multiple yes, times. Yes, yes. It's so weird. <laughs> so, okay, Kaylee, you, okay, I gave the background of like the gin baby hybrid humans. Oh, God. Are we just starting as like a rundown of the movie? Yeah, talk about out? the plot if you're, oh, God. If you watch yeah. it's fresh in your mind. Yeah, it is. Um, so, it kind of starts out with you see this couple that clearly has suffered a loss of a child. And it's very sad and then it kind of fast forwards a little bit and they're clearly going to a therapist to deal with the loss of their child and he is it is it saudi arabia his job is i like walked away for one second um it's their home like where are they going or yeah because they basically to? they live in new york they were they're living in new york mm -hmm. but they're originally yeah. from are you looking it up marissa do you i can't remember yeah well they filmed around dubai but it yeah. was also filmed in like united arab I'm, I might be butchering this. Emirates? Emirates. Yeah, Emirates. Emirates. Yeah. Emirates. Yeah. You're right. So they, so he essentially gets a new job in their original hometown. Her family still lives there. We don't know anything about his family. At some point in the movie, he says, you're all I have to his wife. Um, so they're at this, in this therapy session and he's kind of trying to convince her, like, it'll help us move forward if we go back home and I have this new opportunity, it'll be great. And at some point the therapist <laughs> is like, the therapist is encouraging the fact that they could grow from this and maybe start fresh. And then she just goes, you, you can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the wife is kind of like, what do you mean? And she turns to her husband and is like, what does she mean by that? And he's like, no, she, I know it sounded, you know, menacing clearly, but it's not what it seems. She meant it this way. And then they end up moving back and her family, her father and mother and her little sister pick them up at the airport and they're gonna drive him to, his job basically provides a home for them in this luxury apartment building. So they're driving to this building and they enter this tunnel and as they drive into the tunnel, you see this fog start to, <laughs> start to close in. It's very okay, slow. that's the storm. The storm yeah, it's, that, it's, it's the storm. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they're drive, they drive out and I don't remember who it was exactly, but somebody makes a comment like, oh, is it always this foggy? And they're like, oh yeah, it'll, it'll pass, you know? And then this family's driving and it's straight up like foggier Yeah, than they the cannot fog. drive in this condition, y'all. Like, like it's, it's like <laughs> was, the mist. You I can't was, yeah. see anything. I was and watching just... as a friend and he's like, this is the foggiest movie I've ever yeah, seen. You can't life. see anything. And no. he's like, and I've seen the fog. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's what yes. 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 So they basically drive into a cloud and it, it's just white all around them. And they're, they're you know, the, the dad's driving this Escalade and the mom's in the passenger side and her, her husband and her little sister in the back seat. And suddenly, you know, out of nowhere, there's a shadow and the dad swerves and they're like, ah, what are you doing? And he says, uh, oh, there's somebody in the middle of the road. <laughs> but they pull off to the side of the road. My, one of my favorite lines of the movie is the mom is just like, we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody reacts to it. Nobody even responds really. And the dad is gonna get out and they keep trying to like, whatever. And then the, the son-in-law is like, I'll go see what's going on. So he gets out of the car and he's walking around, but he can't see anything obviously because it's so foggy. It's like walking into a sheet and uh, he wanders and you start hearing these weird like chittering and scream kind of like screaming but it's very dull like it sounds like it's off in the distance and then he comes out and he he looks up suddenly and there's this huge tower in front of him 
and it turns out it's the apartment complex. And his wife gets out of the car shortly after him. Am I breaking this down well enough? Or I just watched it. It's very yeah, clear. I feel like uh, you're explaining <laughs> this too well because I'm like, this sounds like really interesting. So I am far. describing it better than it actually is. <laughs> Well, and and the first, I feel like the first, the beginning of it, you're kind of like, oh, this might be intriguing. It's a little cheesy, but let's see where it goes. And then his wife comes up behind him and she's like, what's going on? And then she notices a tower and he turns to her and he just says, home sweet home. <laughs> it's, no. it's so corny. So whatever, fast forward, they get to the hotel or the apartment. They check in, there's a sketchy doorman named Sammy and her mom's immediately like, I don't trust him. And she's like, why? He's too nice. He wants something. <laughs> I can't break down this whole movie. Should I? I don't know. No. Well, okay. So they move in. <laughs> they move in and they're like yeah. haunted by these like baby cries. You yeah. Know? And she's haunted by like the loss of her child. And she has the same flashback throughout yeah. the movie. Like her kid died. How did her kid die? You know? And you don't know. Like, you don't know, and then, and then the her gym hus- comes. And her husband has to go to work, and she's alone, and she keeps hearing these echoing cries. And there's this dolls. takes place over one day, a mind single you. day. They just moved in, and like then the she just gets much yes. haunted. She, like, at one point, she calls her little sister. I think she tries to call her little sister, and she's kind of having a meltdown after seeing these visions and hearing things. And she's like, "I've been here six hours, and I'm already losing my mind." Yeah, it's just. I mean, when does the gin come in though? Like, Pretty the quickly. Oh. Kind of there throughout the entire time. But the thing is, is that this movie is a, it's a combination of like almost every freaking horror movie you can think of. Yes. There's, there's like a lot of tropes. Oh my God. Well I mean, executed. the fog, there's like. The um, dogs, the random scene where she walks out to like, I don't. She, yeah. Like Rosemary's baby. Yeah. Rosemary's um, baby. The omen. There's like. um. So do they get a child from the gin? No. So it turns out. Okay. Spoiler just, just spoiler just, alert if you really are interested in watching this movie. Uh, skip ahead a little bit. It turns out. So at the beginning, I guess I skip past this part. They show like a very brief part that clearly takes place prior to this apartment, apartment complex being built. And it's these two natives and this like classic, like dumb American dude. And they are going to... I don't know. It seems like they're going to kind of check out the territory for the wherever it's going to be built, the property. And they they basically teach this American dude the history of the site. And the history involves this djinn and how uh, this female djinn left a baby in this couple's apartment. And then they call in a preacher to essentially exercise the like de- demonic presence and try to send this baby on its own to live a normal life and not be involved with the gin. Okay. And then the dudes get killed or whatever. You never see him again, but it just sets up that history of that specific mm-hmm. spot. And then later you find out that the husband is actually the baby from the story they're telling. Okay. Yeah. So he's half human, half he's gin. He's half human, half gin. And then you also find out that his wife, they have a baby. And initially you think it's like sudden infant death syndrome that the baby mm-hmm. that causes the death of the baby, but it turns out she killed the baby because she real she knew the history of the story of Jin. And it looks like a demon baby. It looks like, like a demon baby. It has like, like black like, eyes, weird <laughs> it's like the crib reveal that we yeah. never got from Rosemary's baby. Exactly. Yes. That's exactly gotcha. yes. So you you see a lot of so shots they go full demon in that in this yes. in this yeah, version. But so it, it doesn't no... look good. It's like all shitty FX. Yeah. It's yeah. so bad. Like it so, could have been practical and it had a five million dollar yes, budget. So yes. it was like no money. But like if it were practical, it could it have looked been fun way better. and cool. Yeah. Yeah. And represented like I mean, they were, you know, speaking their native language. They had mm-hmm. actors that were not, you know, American. There was only mm-hmm. one or two Americans in there and like you know, I think that like culturally in terms of representation, like it could have been, it was actually not bad, you know, mm-hmm. but like um, the story just fell so flat because yeah. of how ridiculous the characters were, how ridiculous the plot was and how bad it looked. It was just so choppy mm-hmm. and yeah, you, like he, so essentially it, they're lured to this property by his mother, the Jin. Okay. And you find out that they're living in this apartment complex that's not even finished yet. Because at one point he calls the police and they show up and it's like a building still under construction. But there's people there and it seems done to them. 
and they go up to the penthouse floor and that's kind of where the final battle takes place which is the 61st floor i think of that building it's a very large building and the jinn essentially tells him your wife killed your son and he pushes her off a ledge and kills her and says you know blood for blood blood for blood blood for blood this is my home and then he turns around and transforms into a gin and then it's credits okay yeah well there you go we took we took that for y'all like <laughs> we took that <laughs> you don't have, so you, basically, you don't have to watch it Basically, but we did what you're you. saying is that David and Justin <laughs> are we're really banking on your Jin movie being a lot better. A lot yes. better. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which I've heard rumblings of it being much Yes. Much, I have much, heard, like, I have heard good things from the people that run the fest. Best so. fest favorite is what I've heard yes. from some. So. so yeah, I'm very excited. Yes. Well, um, I feel like we couldn't go without at least mentioning uh, Kazam. Andrea? <laughs> um, and if we're gonna mention Kazam, starring Jaquille O'Neal, we have to talk about 1994's Shazam <laughs> with Sinbad <laughs> that may or may not exist. <laughs> Just like I'm Jin. Still, I'm still on the It Exists camp, but I also am a fan of, like, time loops and multi-dimensional stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, you know, there was a split in 2012 when the world ended and we got sucked into the black hole and, like, half of us remember it and half of us don't. Like the Berenstein Bears? Yeah, but it's, you know, like, it happened. And Phil Hartman was in it. <laughs> and I want to say the Landis kid was in it, too. No, really? Yeah, Jonathan I, Landis? I, I swear, like, I have oh, wait, no. memories of this thing. I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah. But people can revisit our Mandela. But, that was yeah, the, if you But never... when did we get into that? Was that the Candle Cove episode? I yes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I believe so, yeah. If you've never listened to our podcast before, this is the first time you've ever listened to it. We talk about cannibals and... Shazam. Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> it's I a terrible summary, but... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, I mean, I feel like also just to kind of wrap up the concept of Jin, um, is there, do you feel like right now, are you more a fan of the concept of a dark representation of the Jin, or do you like the lightheartedness that is in a lot of our pop culture? Do you, I feel like for me, I think there is a lot of room for the dark concept to come out and like have some fun because I agree yeah I think that we have plenty of cute fun genies um but I think we could totally explore some more spooky stuff I mean there was like that wish uh the wish movie or whatever with um I can't remember her name she found that wish box oh you know what I'm talking about yeah um wish box it has that girl from uh, the Kissing Booth in it, and I can't think of yeah. what her name is. Oh, <laughs> but it's uh, it's just called like Wish Upon. That's what it's called. That's what it is. Mm. Yep. And uh, that's one where I feel like it majorly failed with the concept. So again, um, the concept of darkness coming from your wishes, I feel like is something that I have enjoyed in other movies, and I think that it could be a really good thing to explore more of. So, mm -hmm. and especially the yeah, I agree. as a concept, I think there could be tons of really cool dark uh, interpretations of it, so. Like, I'm gonna completely not answer this question and say I yeah. love the duality of it and the mm -hmm. fact okay. that they can be like really Both. super mm -hmm. evil or not, or sometimes they just don't care and they're just like having fun mm -hmm. with humans. Right. Um, but I, I kind of like that aspect of it. I was going to say something similar, Andrea, like, I like the lighthearted genie, like, how can you not enjoy that concept? Yeah. And then, like, the fumbling genie, and then the genie that has, or gin that has this evil element to it. I know there's so much you could do with it. I just, I like the duality as well. Yeah. But like give me more for, dark. Like, a series, you know? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. a good series with different kinds of gin, almost, like, existing in the same universe or something. Oh, yeah. But... I feel like it's just such a um, missed opportunity, though, for uh, practical effects. I feel like this would be such a cool, you know. And then I'm very curious about the film that's playing at Panic Fest. Like, I'm I'm yeah. curious about how they approach it because, um, yeah, I just think that you can do a lot of really cool visuals with 
this kind of folklore and storyline. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, we have filmmakers out there. Like, I want an anthology series. Of- Ooh, that would be fun. Oh, that'd, that'd be cool. Be That's a good really idea. good idea. Yeah, you could totally do an anthology with just Jenny with just various that, stories yeah. of yeah, mm-hmm. filmmakers. Yeah, I need this. Come Here on, we go. Please. Bring it. So much fun. You could do so much with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the show, uh, we usually end our well, we always end our episodes with us talking about. What has been casting a spell on us this week? So we haven't done this in quite a while oh, because God, uh, yeah. season one ended. We're, we're coming up on season two soon. So we hope that you'll come back, uh, check out some of our older episodes or join us with season two. But uh, ladies, what's been casting a spell on you lately? What this week, lately, you know, whatever it is. What's something you've loved lately? I was undecided about this up until Marissa was talking about like the, how different like the gin and the representation um, and we see all the, these tropes and the same types of like evil um, in movies. And something that I caught at the um, Panic Fest Tricks and Treats was the vigil. Mm-hmm. And it is about a um, funeral um, and in Jewish tradition, they have somebody watch the body that's a shomer. And mm-hmm. this guy, um, without getting into spoiler territory but basically he has to watch the body through the night Mm -hmm. and it's incredible um one of the first movies in a long time that like legitimately scared me like i was um very uncomfortable through this entire thing looking over my shoulder kind of like little noises the cats are jumping off stuff and i'm like "Ah, i'm ready to fight but um really really good i think it's pretty limited where you can watch it right now i think it's yeah uh, for rent a few places but i'm I'm hoping it gets picked up for a wider distribution because it was just amazing and very nice to see a different cultural perspective from um, a different type of religious belief because like I love spooky like Catholic exorcism movies and stuff like that but like after a while it's like okay let's get a different perspective on things and it's like very refreshing. Yeah, I've heard really good things about that movie. I have too, yeah. It's definitely been on my to watch list so I'm definitely gonna have to check it out when I can. So, uh, Marissa, what about you? I've been revisiting 11-22-63. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So that is probably my top three favorite uh, Stephen King books. And I love the series a lot. So I've been revisiting the series lately. And um, <clears throat> not a huge James Franco fan, but he does a really good job uh, mm-hmm. in that series. And so... Yeah, it's like a comfort sort of for me, but I do like how there's a lot of different aspects to it. Like there's a horror element, there's a historical element, there's um, romance element, and then also sci-fi with the concept of the butterfly effect. So it's kind of relevant to um, what we talk about in this episode in the sense that like the plot of the book and the TV show is uh, go, if you could go back in time, like essentially the main character is able to go back in time and uh, he tries to stop the uh, JFK assass- assassination <clears throat> in Dallas. And, you know, when he goes back, it's like his decisions and his actions, uh, the past is kind of personified and it pushes against him and tries to keep it uh, the way things are. But it, it's so good. Um, it's like you think that this one event would need to be stopped, but actually like that one event may have happened for a reason and things could have been worse had it not happened. Mm-hmm. So it explores kind of like wanting to go back or change things or wish things were different. Um, maybe it's for the best after all, like in a fucked up kind of way, but it's so great. If y'all aren't familiar or haven't read the book or haven't watched the series, they're both amazing. So mm-hmm. I've just kind of be re- revisiting that. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm going to go off on kind of a weirder thing and go with, I've been really enjoying a website called itch.io or itch.io. I don't know. Some people pronounce it itch.io. I don't know. Uh, and it's a gaming website. Basically, you can go on there and like find games to download and I just never really knew this thing existed uh until I started watching um 
there's a guy on YouTube that I watch named John Wolf, and he does game walkthroughs and stuff for basically anything spooky. Um, and so he was doing all these things. He does this series where it's three random horror games or four random horror games or whatever. And they're usually short form games. Like they, they're probably like 20 minutes long, you know? And so I, I really was liking watching his stuff. And then he kept saying, oh yeah, I found this game on itch.io, blah, blah, whatever. And so I finally was like, I'm going to check this out. And literally, first of all, I could download most of them on my Mac, which is pretty cool because, uh, a lot of games are, you know, PC specific, but uh, I've been downloading a lot of the free ones, the free to play ones. And it's just so fun. Like I played this one called Project Cat and it was basically kind of uh, anime-esque, I guess, but it's this mm-hmm. little school girl and she's joins the, uh, she joins the, I can't get Coven Club out of my head because it's, but it's not Coven <laughs> Club, the occult club at her school. And, uh, they basically are all like, oh, you're not really into this, whatever. But then the whole time you're playing the game, you're trying to set up like a ritual thing. And so then you're able to complete the ritual. You go into this like dark dimension thing. It's very like weird. You're just kind of like walking through and like clicking through. And it's almost just a story that you're kind of partially playing through. You don't do a lot of gaming, like game. It's not like you're running Mm -hmm. away or having to jump around or stuff. Uh, But yeah, anyways, if you just want something fun and quick to play, another one I played was six cats under i think and it was literally you are a grandma who's been crushed by her bookshelf what (laughs) oh my god that's gonna be me one day (laughs) and so that she has a bunch of cats old on a grandma but my cats are gonna eat me she has a bunch of cats and you (laughs) as her like you're like her ghost and you have to like go through and try to like like you'll like kind of make the toilet paper wave a little bit so that your cat tries to play with it but you're basically trying to like get the I cats love this. to do enough. That's amazing. Yeah, you have to get the cats to do enough to get them to open the door so that like somebody oh can God, find your body. Oh my God, funny. Yeah, I love so it. It's what really is this ridiculous. website? Uh, itch.io, like I-T-C-H dot I-O instead of I, dot com. But yeah. I, I want to play, that looks, that sounds amazing. I mean, it's literally like a five minute game if you like, it's not. Yeah, long, but, but. It's like super cute, the pixely art and like, it's just it's so i love to see what people come up with because it's a lot of indie game you know it's people mm-hmm. that are like two people maybe that or one person that made this game you know so it's it's really fun so i highly recommend it and plus people are freaking creepy like some stuff is very scary like there's one mm-hmm. called pink where it's just like this girl and you think you're watering a plant the whole time but then like it gets real weird so yeah anyway highly recommend checking it out it's fun to just go through mm-hmm. so interesting Okay, um, Kaylee, what what's your thing? So I got, uh, there's only eight episodes, but I got really into this podcast uh, earlier this week called The Opportunist. Mm-hmm. Um, and the this is the first season of it, but the, essentially like the premise of each season is it's true stories of regular people who turn sin- sinister simply by being opportunistic. So the first uh, season is about this woman named Sherry Schreiner who started an internet cult, basically. Like, she grew up in a wow. church and uh, suddenly got obsessed with, the like, the idea that, you know, uh, all these famous people and uh, political people were reptilians and that aliens were coming, and she sold all these, like, she made these rocks called Orgone, and she called her followers Orgone Warriors, and it's just, it's eight episodes, and it's basically about how this woman just essentially got obsessed with this idea and then got on YouTube and started preaching her beliefs and got all these followers, which eventually ends up in like a murder, maybe suicide and a couple other weird deaths that she's kind of blamed for, but they can't really blame it. Like, you know, cause she wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just interesting cause her followers never saw her face. She was an older woman that had, I think four children that was married, but she was very prevalent on the internet up until I think she died in 2017 maybe. Cause she was a Trump supporter, like towards the end of her life. She kind of fell into that. Yeah, All that makes that's why she about, died. <laughs> is, uh, no, there's a movie at, uh, screening <laughs> next week at Panic Fest about uh, Pizzagate. Have you yeah, seen, yeah, the Dun- trailer Duncan. Like the... Duncan, I am yeah, so excited. I haven't for watched that the trailer one. yet, but it's on my. Uh, that was my side uh, thing. Is I've been really busy with work lately, and just other random things going on. And I took five days off to attend Panic Fest, 
because it's always been my vacation. If I haven't worked it, I'll take time off to go to movies. So I have my spreadsheet that I'm planning and I've been watching trailers for the last, whenever it was they released the schedule, I think it was Monday of this week. So I've just been kind of delving into what am I watching? When can I see it? Like how many movies can I watch in a day? What movies can I watch? from home because I got a hybrid pass yeah, so I can watch more online and in person. It's even more because it's like, oh, I can do both. Yeah. yeah. But it's nice because I can't take 10 days off of work. So I can... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I can I can like plot out the movies I want to see in person and then I know I'll have five extra days to catch yeah, to things them. online. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. So yeah, Panic Fest, it's happening. Woo! So, so excited. excited. Well, yeah, we got to thank Panic Fest. Yes, please. Letting us be a part of this year's fest. It's been really exciting. We were excited mm-hmm. to kind of kick off our season two with this episode. Yeah. So, uh, well, before we end, um, whether you are a returning listener or just checking us out during Panic Fest, thanks for joining us here today um, and, you know, joining our coven. Uh, So season two is coming up and we're going to be chatting about Fear of the Forest for Earth Day. So you can join us. That's our first episode back is on Earth Day. Uh, We're going to be talking about The Watcher House, The Black Eyed Children, The Granny Ripper, Blood Colts, and so much more. (laughs) The Granny Ripper. I love that one. We've got it all. (laughs) So uh, make sure you find us on Anchor, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Black Magic Coven. And please subscribe and leave us a review. So we really appreciate you guys checking us out during the fest. Yeah. Uh, enjoy the rest of the movies or pods or there's so much going on. I know. And the gather space and all of the things. Yeah, gather. I know. And Tim has put so much work. There's also, I guess we should mention, we do have our own space and gather. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah. So you can, if you're new to the podcast or you want to revisit old episodes, I know Tim has put these little, um, I don't remember what he called them, these little like widgets about where you yeah. can click and listen to episodes or The preview. Fresno Nightcrawlers are there. Yep, they are. That's all I wanted. Yeah, and I'll be roaming around gather space yes, throughout. Yes, I will Panic too. Fest. Yeah, I will try as well to be. It's so appearance. fun. I love it. Yeah. So. Well, Thanks, guys. Yes. This concludes the gathering of the Black Magic Coven. Downright Creepy Original on the Crickets Podcast Network.